All right, for this section, we're going to be discussing uh, L'Hopital, L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital. There's one of those deals in there somewhere. L'Hopital's rule. And the idea here is this. If you want to take the limit as x approaches, it's not always 0, but usually 0 or infinity. But I'm just going to say as x approaches a of some f of x, over some g of x, and if that ends up being 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, we've got a problem. These are what we refer to as the indeterminate forms. And L'Hopital's rule works for both of these forms. Now there are times when we can get one that's awfully close to those forms, but it's not quite there, and we have to do a little bit of algebra to force it into that. Um, but see, what we're going to do is we need to figure out what the actual limit is here. So what L'Hopital said was, hey, if, you, if this is true, then take the derivative of f of x, take the derivative of g of x, and take the limit of that as x approaches a. And if, so if, this equals some constant, for instance, or even infinity, you know, you're done. But if not, if this also produces an indeterminate form, you just keep going. What's the what's the limit of this? Uh, what you know? How far can you go? Yeah, as far as you want, actually, as far as you can go. Um, this will give you the limit eventually. Uh, on most functions. There are one or two weirdos out there that may this may not you, you may not ever be able to get to it based on um, you know, what they're what it is that they're approaching, if you will. So without further ado, let's do a couple. Now we know this one already because we've thought processed our way through it. So we know what the answer is going to be before we get too far along the lines. Okay. And we know the limit is x that goes to infinity. We know the answer is 0. We've, we've graphed it 100 times. We, we've talked our way through it. But tonight, we're going to prove that. So first of all, notice that if you let x go to infinity, you get infinity over infinity. And what I like to ask myself is, well, who's getting to infinity first? If the bottom's getting to infinity faster, that is, it's getting bigger faster, then the whole fraction is approaching 0. Okay. But if the numerator is getting bigger faster, then the thing's blowing up to infinity because the, the number just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if they get big at roughly the same rate, then it'll approach a constant. And so we know these kind of things. So what L'Hopital said was, well, if that happens, which it did, take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and take the limit of that as x approaches infinity. Well, that's 1 over basically infinity or 1 over a very large number so the answer is 0. Okay, and of course you can graph that. Now before, remember we did this when we first did these guys, we said well let's multiply by 1 over x squared which is the highest power of x in the denominator. So you got 1 over x plus 2 over x squared over 2 plus 6 over x squared. And Take the limit as x goes to infinity. This goes to 0, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0, so it just becomes 0 over 2. And so that's how we did it before. And for problems like this one, yeah, yeah, a person could totally do that every time. But they don't all look like that guy. For instance, there's this one that comes along. This is a very famous one. This is one that a person really needs to know. Obviously, 0 is what's going to cause us an issue. Sine is 0 is 0. X is 0. Obviously, it's 0, so we have a problem. And so 0 over 0 is undefined. So L'Hopital comes along and says, we'll take the derivatives individually. Now take the limit as x approaches 0. Well, the limit, the cosine of theta, a cosine of 0 rather, is 1. Over 1 is 1. Therefore, the limit of the sine of x over x as x approaches 1 is also 1. Okay? That's a very, that's a very famous one. Another very famous one is, uh, is cosine of x minus 1 over x, take the limit as x approaches a goose egg. And lo and behold, that becomes 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0, which is undefined again. Take the derivative, you get minus sine x 
over 1. Take the limit of that as x approaches 0. Sine of x is 0. 0 over 1 is, in fact, 0. So those are some nice, easy ones. Um, you can do a whole bunch of these. We do them all day long. Uh, the limit as x approaches, uh, let's say, infinity of 3 e to the x over e to the 2x. Uh, no. 2 e to the th yeah, well, no. Plus 5. Minus 2x. There we go. So as this goes to infinity, we've got infinity over infinity. And that's a problem. Ugh. So, Opie Tall comes along and says, hey, take the derivative. I said, okay. Take the derivative of the bottom, he says. I said, okay. Now take the limit as x approaches infinity. Oh, well, it's still infinity over infinity. That sucks. So take it again, he said. Well, it's 3e to the x over 2e to the x. Oh, <laughs> look what we got now, friends. Because now... Through the magic of algebra, see ya. The answer is simply one and a half. In other words, they are getting big er at roughly the same rate. Therefore, the top and the bottom will approach this number one and a half, where the top is always one and a half times bigger than the bottom as x approaches infinity. Okay? And that's kind of a neat deal there. So, fun, 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 fun. Everyone has some fun on these, okay? What if you end up with x e to the minus x? Take the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, this is infinity times 0. Now, you may recall that only, in, only infinity times infinity, infinity times infinity, or um, 0, uh, either infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, those are the only two that are, are indeterminate forms. That said, um, that said, yeah, there, this is still a problem. We, we don't know what 0 times infinity is, okay? So what we need to do is we need to rewrite this in a different fashion. So now remember, one way to write this, of course, is to say, well, e to the negative x, well, it belongs on the bottom, right? I mean, that's what e to the negative x actually is. And so take the limit of that as x approaches infinity. And of course, it's infinity over infinity, which is now of the right form. So that's 1 over e to the x. And of course, the limit as x approaches infinity of this mess is 0, because the bottom's getting big really fast. So in this case, 0 times infinity is, in fact, 0. That's not always true, OK? And in fact, it's not actually true. We, the limit is approaching zero times infinity, but you can never get to infinity. So to say, so to say that zero times infinity is zero is, is kind of a misnomer because that's, you can't actually get there. <laughs> okay? Um, you know, you could write this a number of ways. Um, suppose you had... Uh, yeah, let me see on here. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm about to break the book out here. Darn it. Why do I lose my train of thought some days? I don't know. Four point five. There we go. And so, again, you're going to see some goofy, crazy ones, and then you're going to see some really crazy ones. For instance, you might see the... Uh, um, yes. X times 1 over X. For instance, my eight ones that might show up. X times E to the 1 over X. And the limit, of course, as X approaches infinity might be an issue. Yes? So check this out. Uh, what's happening here is I end up with, um, I'm sorry, the limit as x approaches 0, rather. So I end up with 0, 
And then this is infinity, basically. One over a tiny number is huge, so e to a huge number is infinity. Again, this is a bit of a problem. Okay, now, we can rewrite this in a number of ways, but I think the easiest way to write it is to write it as this. Because what I've done is I've just said, well, all right, well, I'll divide by one, minus, 1 over x, which is the same thing as multiplying by x. It doesn't change anything about the problem. This, this problem here is the same as this problem right here. Okay. So let's take the derivatives of these guys. Well, remember, this is the same as e to the negative x. This is what this is saying up here. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite this for a moment, if you don't mind. And so it's going to give me the derivatives of those are going to be negative e to the negative x and negative x to the minus 2. Now, it's at this juncture where a person might go, you know what, let's flip this thing over because this is obviously both positives. The x squared would like to be on top and the e to the x would like to be on the bottom, yes? So it's at this juncture that a person goes, well, if I evaluate that at 0, the limit as x approaches 0 of this fella is, well, wait. <coughs> well, you're going to get 0 on top and you're going to get 1 on the bottom, so the limit is, in fact, 0. Now, a guy can check this out pretty easy because all you have to do is bring up your Desmos and say, well, let's graph that. So x e to the 1 divided by x. Whoa, <gasps> weird. Uh, yeah. Now, notice that this one is kind of a big deal kind of a weird deal because we said the limit as x approaches as x approaches zero okay ooh tricky dicky what are they doing what notice that from the graph as you approach it from this side it is approaching zero going the other way it's headed towards infinity now think about that for a minute why might that be the case okay well probably the case on account of on account if you go back and look at the sign okay so what happens to this thing is x goes from a negative. So if we, if we say it like this, well, this part's still going to zero, but this part here, yeah, it's going to. It would actually be going to. Um, it would be heading it toward the, from the positive side. Uh, so from the negative side, this would be uh, it'd be negative infinity. So yeah, well, that would be the problem. Is though it would come up to you have to pay attention to what side you're coming at from. So anyway. Why I like the graphs is it's so easy to tell if you're right or not. For instance, I go back to our first one of the first ones we did, sine of x over x. Boom. The limit as x approaches 0 is 1. But notice it's actually undefined at 0, yes? A hole in the function. Okay. Now let's see if we got another one up our sleeves here, another messy, gross one. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. So if you have 2x sine x over 2 secant x minus 1, I think. Is that what I said? That is correct. And we would like to know, we would like to know, what is the limit as x approaches 0? Okay, well, the top is clearly 0. Secant of, uh, the secant of 0 is 1. So 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. So here's the question. Do you need... Do you need um, do you need L'Hopital for this guy, or is it in fact okay to just go ahead and use uh, just regular just your regular uh, limit rules? And the answer in this one is no, I don't need it because it's only if it's of the indeterminate form. So again, if you come over here and graph that, give it to me. Two x sine x <laughs> and at zero it actually exists at zero there aren't there's no hole in this function there now 
they notice the denominator will never be zero because the secant, um, if I look at secant, is there any places where secant's undefined? Well, secant has problems at like pi over two and things like that. And so if you come along here, pi over two, there might be an issue with that one, right? So at pi over two, right there, it looks weird. So let's graph that for fun, just for fun. Secant. Yes, and at pi over two, it's undefined. Well, why is that not a problem on this one? Why is that okay here? And here's why. Because remember, that's really 2 over secant, 2 over cosine, rather, minus 1, right? Which is really 2 minus cosine over cosine. Am I right? If you get a, co if you get a common denominator. And so then I could really do this. 2x sine x, that's on top, over 1 times cosine x times 2 minus sine x, uh, cosine x, rather. Point is, the denominator, this, the biggest cosine can ever be is what? Well, 1. And 2 minus 1 is, is 1. So this thing will never be 0 in the denominator. So it's never going to give us a problem, to be honest with you. And so that's kind of cool. When you look at L'Hopital, it's always important to see, to ask yourself, is there a problem here? Because a lot of times there isn't going to be a problem at all. And that's because of the fact that, you know, we're trying to fool you, see if you're paying attention at all. And then just kind of see where we go from there. Well, here's a couple more. They're a little nasty. I think they're fun because I'm weird, I guess. <laughs> oh, you idiot. 1 over ln of x minus 1, o minus 1 over x minus 1. And the limit of that mass as x approaches 1. So clearly, the ln of 1 is 0. So 1 over 0, we got like infinity minus oh my gosh it's infinity or something that's weird but it's not indeterminate so what we need is we need a common denominator and so we need to multiply this thing times this thing for our common denominator and if you cross multiply you're going to get x minus one minus the ln of x now it might be of the form you know we have a problem so 1 minus 1 is 0, so no big deal there, minus the ln of 1, which is also 0, so we've got 0 in the numerator. The ln of zero, uh, ln of 1 is 0, times 0 is 0, so oh boy, that's a problem. So let's take derivatives. That's going to be 1 minus 1 over x. The bottom is going to require us to do a product rule, so 1 over x times x minus 1 plus uh, 1 times ln of x. Okay. Now, you can try it like this, and it may or it may not work. We may need to do some algebra first. So if you plug 1 in there, you're going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0. You're going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0 here. So it's going to be 1 times 0, and then plus 0. Ah, crap. And so you're like, oh, i got to take a derivative again. Well, maybe, maybe, or... Maybe we do some algebra first, okay? Maybe we do some algebra first. So, on top, if we get a common denominator, it's going to be x minus 1 over x, yes? And on the bottom, right now we already have x minus 1 over x here, plus, now I need to have x ln of x over x, yes? <laughs> Which is x minus 1 over x, over x minus 1 plus x ln x over x. And so if you invert and multiply, the x's cancel out and you end up with x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus x ln of x. Now if you evaluate that at 1, you end up with 0 over 0 again. But you're like, how did that help me? Well, it helped. It really did, I promise. So let's take derivatives one more time. It's going to be 1 over 1 plus it's ln of x plus x over, or x times 1 over x, which is just 1, of course. <laughs> now take the limit as x approaches 1. 
Well, the top is one. So that's good news. That means I'm done with L'Hopital now. I don't have to fool with it anymore because it's not zero over zero. It's not infinity over infinity. It is just a matter of, you know, it's going to be one over something. One over six, maybe? I don't know, maybe. Could it be one over, you know, infinity? Yeah, it could be. could be a lot of different things, um, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. So, on the bottom, you put the one in there, you're going to get zero. One plus one is two. So we're saying that that thing right there should have a limit of a half. And let's go look at it. So one over ln of x. I think is that what it was? <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Minus. <coughs> and as we approach, as we approach one. Sure looks like our. Sure looks like it ought to be what? Sure it looks like it ought to be a half, right? And that's our answer. So that's pretty cool to see. I think the last one I want to do is is, is this one tonight. And uh, I do it because it's, well, it's interesting, I think. So you've got tangent of 2x to the x. And... Yeah, um, hmm, weird. <laughs> Take the limit of this as x approaches zero from the right. Okay, well, if you plug zero in there, you're going to get tangent of zero is zero. You get zero to the zero power. Yeah, that's not one. Okay, what is it? Yeah, I'm not real sure. So what we end up doing is a cute little trick we did back when we did implicit differentiation. And we took the derivatives of things like arc tangents. We said, well, let's let y equal this. And we take the ln of y, and that becomes x times the ln of tangent of 2x. Make sense? So now, what we're going to do then is take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x ln of tangent of 2x. And you're like, well, how can we do that? Well, it's cool because in a minute we're going to get the dirt, we're going to get this and let's say it's 2, then I just plug it back in and I just solve for y. Okay? We'll do that in a few minutes. So this is how it's done. So I plug 0 in, I'm going to get 0 times and then uh, the, we know this is zero, the tangent of zero is zero, and then the ln of zero is infinity, so it's technically negative infinity. That's a problem. That's a problem. So then the question is, well, uh, what can we do about that? Well, the way to fix that is to make and to rewrite this as the ln of, oops, the ln of tangent of 2x over x to the minus 1. That's exactly the same function. So the derivative of the numerator is a chain rule, so it's 1 over tan 2x times the secant squared of 2x times 2 all over negative x to the minus 2. Okay? So what I end up with is, well, several things. I guess I can write this about 100 different ways, but one way to write I'm going to put the 2 on the negative 2 and the x squared up on top. Okay, secant squared is really cosine squared, so I'm going to put that on the bottom because I'm weird, I guess. And tangent of 2x is already on the bottom. Make sense? So, let's see what happens here. Well, hmm, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is going to be 0 over, and then the cosine is uh, 1. The tangent is zero again, so we've got zero over zero. Yeah, still have a problem. But I think we're closing in on it. So the derivative of the numerator is negative 4x. This is a chain rule, and there's a product, and this is also a chain right there. So it's going to be 2 cosine 2x times the minus sine of 2x 
times 2 times tangent of 2x plus cosine squared 2x secant squared uh, 2x times 2. Alright, let's see what we got here. So negative 4x on the top. All right, And here we're going to have is it negative 4 and then we're going to have cosine 2x sine 2x tangent 2x plus 2 cosine squared secant squared wait a minute cosine squared cosine sit times sine hey they cancel out because they're written they're uh, inverses of one another how cool is that and then you're like well wait a minute though I feel like tangent is also or tangent rather it could also be written as sine of 2x over cosine of 2x which means that this and this cancel and so I end up with negative 4 on the top still and I get negative 4 sine 2x and sign and then there's a sign here and the sign here so there's two of them plus 2 and so now if I take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right well of course the numerator is negative 4 so no matter what else happens I'm done using L'Hopital now plug a 0 into here this is 0 so 0 plus 2 is 2 and the answer is negative 2 now remember what we just found we found the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the ln of y of the ln of the ln, well, I'm going to say the ln of y, let's say, is equal to negative 2. Well, that's great, but what is y? So if you take y is equal to then e to the negative 2, which I don't have a number for that, but I'll go find one. So 0.133. Interestingly enough, if you graph that, that'll be pretty cool in a minute. So then my equation was... That's right. Tangent of 2x Oops. Uh, nope. Try again, dummy. Ta da. Well, as you can see, I schmucked up because tangent of 2x to the x, you can see, clearly needs to be there at 0, at 1, right? So that's how you know you, you messed up. So I'm going to pause you while I go find it. Bear with me one moment. All right, found it. I'm just stupid. It happened right here is where the problem happened, I guess. Um, yeah. So what I should have done is I should have cleaned this mess up a little bit, I guess. Um, and kind of seen what, what, what that did for me. Um, and because I think this would have helped out a little bit. Because what is tangent? Tangent is sine over cosine. So this bit right here is really going to be cosine of 2x over sine of 2x. Are you with me? Times, and this is 1 over cosine of 2x squared like that right so this cancels this is just cosine of 2x I guess it's 2x okay and then um, yeah so then so I end up with 2 over sine 2x cosine 2x and then this negative x squared comes up on top Okay. And 
and something still screwy here. So what I did was I said, well, let's take the derivative here. Oh, you know what I did wrong? <gasps> okay, hang on. I know what I did wrong. Pause you again. All right, I'm back. So here I did. I took the derivative, and that's what I had a minute ago. And then I'm just going to say, let's go such that x equals 0. And, of course, it's still undefined, obviously. So I'm going to start off with that. So I'm going to have negative 2x squared sine of x, or 2x, rather, times the cosine of 2x. Now this is where it's coming real handy sometimes to know that 2 sine x cosine x is equal to the sine of 2x. And you're like, wait a minute. Well, right here, this is really a half of a sine of 4x. What do you think about that? Because what I have is I have sine of 2x times the cosine of 2x. If it was a 2 right there, it would be the whole sine of 4x. So do I have to do this? I think it's helpful. You don't have to. You could still schmuck around with it, do it the other way. I just find this is going to be a little easier, I think. So clearly here, this half ends up up on top. All right, and we, I think we're home free now, baby. Clearly, take the limit, that's going to be 0 over 0. So let's take derivatives again. Judas Priest, this took me forever to do. I apologize. I made a boo-boo. So that simplifies to negative 2x over to cos or over 2. No, it doesn't. Over 2 over cosine of 4x. And what is the limit of that? What is the limit of that as x approaches 0? Well, on top, of course, it's 0. That's from the right, of course. On the bottom, it's 1. So the answer is 0. Hold your horses. You said, but Jay, you said it was 1. Well, I did. Hang on now. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the ln of y is equal to 0. Oh, weird. <clears throat> that means that y is equal to e to the 0 power, yes? Which is, in fact, 1. So the graph can be very helpful in these cases because it's very easy, like I just did here, to make stupid little mistake. Um, very easy to do. So I, I highly recommend you have your calculator in front of you to be able to graph them and check them up. I, I Again, I like Desmos, but you let, do what you want to do.